of the little features in Power Apps have you noticed change recently, right? I count nine currently, and maybe it's because of all the Easter egg hunts and trying to find the eggs that I just hid, and like, where did I hide them at? Maybe that's what brought this to my mind. But basically, there's a bunch of little things that Power Apps has changed over the last few months that don't ever make it into full-scale videos. So I thought it would just make for a fun little quick run-through video to show you all of them and make sure that you know what they are and that you're using them properly, because a lot of them are just quality of life improvements. Sound fun? Then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. So let's just hop to it. With the first feature is drag and drop controls and screens. So did you know that over here on the left now in the tree view, I can just grab screen seven here and drag it up here to where it belongs. Boom, it is where it goes. If we grab screen one here, and so if I wanna move the gallery to the top, we just pick it up and drag it and put it into place. Much easier than the old little click the ellipses here and then do the whole reorder and then move it one step at a time. So drag and drop, there you go, number one. Number two, if we go back over here to the home screen, and so let's make a plan is now the default experience if you got the new one on, but that wasn't a feature. But what number two is, is when you go into tables now, it has gotten a lot better with working with existing ones, right? So the data workspace is better. So if I click on new table here, and just say create new tables. So it drops me into the experience here, but I can go up here and say, hey, I wanna add existing tables. And so now maybe we'll go in here and add my incident tables, right? So I got these three tables for driving my little incident app and little Copilot Studio agent that goes with that. We'll add those in. And look, not only is it add them in, but then it's like, oh, hey, there's relationships here. So it even understands that the relationships are here. So there's a bunch of new improvements with this particular interface, but I thought the fact that I could pull those in was really a nice touch, right? Because you can pull them in, they understand the relationships, and connect all the dots a lot better. Um, you know, we can still work with them. So if I want to go into incident main, right, we can just hit the little ellipses here and we could do uh, view data. Now you've got the data at the bottom. I can edit these existing tables, right? I could add some new rows, add some new columns, do properties, and they've even updated it. I'm not sure when this one trickled in, but when you new column, all of the different column types are here, right? For a long time, we couldn't use this UI to do like files and images and all that. And so those are there, my lookup columns are there. And of course, I could still go ahead and use my words over here to do something like maybe we want to track the incident outcome. So we'll just okay, create me a table named incident outcome. All right, and so now it's going to spin us up a new table. Oh, and it tried to make the main one, that's all right. We can just get rid of that, remove that, remove. So there is our friend incident outcome. And then we could go into that table. So we'll say view data right there. And then we would just use that new column like we just talked about. And so all my other tables have one called incident record. And so we'd say incident record, and it'd be a lookup, and then related table. Look, the ones that are in there are right there front and center. So we could say incident main and say save. And so then now if we X out of there, that table is connected just as well. Also notice the little dot, dot, dots. So say, hey, these solid lines, like this stuff all exists. This is one that I haven't made yet, but this is what would happen if you made it, right? And of course, if we hit save and exit, that's when that table would get generated. So. Very cool, lots of little pieces here, so make sure if you haven't been using this experience, because it's a great experience for building your Dataverse tables, you are definitely checking this one out. All right, number three, let's switch back over to Power Apps again. And so over here, we've got the Create screen. And so the Create screen has gotten updated, and you'll notice up here at the top, we have Start with a Blank Canvas, yay! I have yelled at the product team, begged for this, pleaded for this, and when I rolled out the new design, we got Start with a Blank Canvas, and look, when you start blank, we got tablet and phone like we always had, but we can even start with a blank responsive. Yay! So I thought this was definitely worth noting. You probably have already seen it, but just like kudos to them. I was really impressed. I thought it worth mentioning. And if we X out of that, right, we've also done down here, you know, there's flows, there's AI hub, websites, which means power pages, agents, which means Copilot Studio. So kind of understanding the whole platform is here and you know able to connect the dots for us. And speaking of that whole responsive, like if we go here, let's just do start and do responsive. All right, so number four is the new screen templates themselves. So not this one though, this one is I guess kind of new, right? But all the responsive really meant was they dropped you in here and they used a the default screen, right? But I could just, if I don't like that design, like I can just blow it all away. And what happened really was when we chose that setting, if you looked here under display, they went ahead and turned off scale to fit and lock the aspect ratio, so that way it is ready to go. But what I'm really here to show you is if we go over here to new screen, there are a bunch of new templates here, right? They're all in preview, but we got approval requests, welcome screens, headers, headers and tables, tables and forms. So all of these different screen templates are here, 
And so last week in my training class, one of my students actually had me add one of them. So if I do table and form, I'd never used it before, right? And they are using the modern controls. But if we jump in here to this template, like it is ready to go. All we need to do is go here and choose our data. And right? we'll just search for my SharePoint list. Choose SharePoint, SharePoint. And if we go here to Power Apps Videos, scroll all the way or halfway down employees and say connect, right? You know how to add a SharePoint list. It's like, hey, should I like clean all this up? Yes, we should. And so boom, the gallery is configured. We just go here to the form, we'll click on it, and then we'll hit the little drop down for the table. We'll clear out the function. And then we can just, in the little picker, use our same employees list, right? Now all the dots get connected, all the I's get crossed, and we've got a fully functional app that is not only fully functional, but responsive in just a matter of seconds, right? If we hit uh, the preview button up here, like if I change the look to be an iPhone 12, 13, or 14, which is a little behind the times, guys, look, responsive. And if we click on Chewy's record, there's Chewy's data, yay! And if we cancel, we go back to the list. Notice down here as well, it's got pagination turned on. I was like, how do they do that? So it turns out one of the new modern controls, which I guess I owe you a video on, um, that's not a gallery, actually. That is called the insert and then layout. And then down here, we've got, that is the table control. So still in preview, but kind of cool that it has the whole concept, easy for me to say, of uh, pagination, right? So is that like four features in? All right, while we're over here, we'll go another simple one. Let's just make a new screen. Let's go like a good old fashioned blank. So if you have not noticed yet, we now have stock photos. So like on a image control or like the screen background itself, we go here to the background image and we can choose stock images. Yeah, this one's been here a long time. We just never mentioned it before. So there's stock images. And so there's a whole bunch in here. You can hunt through, you could do things like search, you know, sometimes it's a little weird. Like if I search for dog, I'm pretty sure that's a wolf. But anyway, we get this idea that we've got some different um, images, right? We'll say fill. So, if you're looking for stock imagery, check those out. And then also be sure that you notice it in the stock images. You know, you've got the cutout people, so people doing things. And then you got some little stickers, some, uh, I don't even know what these are, but goofy little cat eating pizza. So all built in now. Yeah, you know, do I use it often? No, but worth you noting. All right, let's jump over here to an app that I've been working on. This was one of the ones I used for my training class last week. And so one of the things I want to show you here is a lovely feature that once again, it's added a while ago, but we've never talked about, and that is the broom or cleanup feature. So did you know that now if you go here to like data, and so say that while you're building this app, you added a bunch of data sources, you don't remember which ones you actually end up using or not using, you can hit the little broom up here in the top right, and it will just sweep away all the data sources you're not using. Great way to clean up your apps, right? It does that for data sources, uh, it does that as for media. So if I've added a bunch of images, right? How many of you have added a bunch of images trying to find the right one? Then you're like, all right, which one do I want to delete? Sweep them away. Whoosh. And now we've cleaned it up, made our app much smaller, more performant. And of course, we can also do the same thing for Power Automate. And so it's got the little broom as well. So all of these little cleanups there, I thought it was somewhere else, but I couldn't remember it. So if you remember, leave me a comment below. I couldn't remember the other place it showed up, but. Anyway, the little quick cleanups, those are just good maintenance, right? Make your app a little bit faster, a little bit happier, a little easier to work with by having stuff that you're not using go away, right? Less the process. All right, so another one, if we go here to the tree view. So we talked about dragging and dropping screens already, right? But what about, did you know that you can also copy? Hey, just a reminder, all of these little ideas, they come from my training classes, right? I taught my 201 live training class last week and so as I was going through class, like we got a chance to talk about all these little features. That's the fun of live training that is not, you know, pre-canned. Like I literally, every class is different because I just go with the flow of what has changed and what is new and what they needed to learn about. You know, like I asked the students, do you want to learn about modern controls or classic controls? I let them vote. They chose modern controls last week. So we did modern controls. Like that's the fun of a live training class. If you ever thought about taking one, go to training.powerapps911.com and look at all the options we got. Sign up today and I will get to hang out with you one day in class. All right, back to the video. Uh, controls and screens now, right? So like if we go here and hit screen five and say view code, this is all of the YAML that makes up the screen for all the controls, all the containers, all the assets for that particular screen. If you copy code, now we can copy 
screens, not just individual controls like we used to be able to, right? Screens used to not be there, but now that it's there, right? If we right click here and we can just say paste our code. And so a new screen five underscore get one gets created. And then all of the things on that screen will get put back into place, all the configuration. So this is a great way if you're trying to move things between apps or you're trying to create libraries of controls. I keep working on a video, never get it finished. I'm like just talking to you guys about using this whole copy and paste code. Like maybe we copy all the code out of the apps we use all the time. You know, you've got different containers, maybe some of those fancy visuals that Ryan's shown us before, but you take those and you copy them into OneNote or Notepad or wherever you like to keep all the little code snippets. And so when you start a new app, instead of opening the old app and copying and pasting, I do that all the time, I can just copy it straight out of Notepad into here. So paste code and copy code, a great tool set. And the fact that now it also does the entire screen is pretty cool, right? And that's how I did the whole Minesweeper thing. If you didn't see the video for that, go check it out. Um, Steve gave us a, the chunk of code. I just copied it in my app and boom, I can play Minesweeper inside of Power Apps. I know, super fun. Feature number eight here. I realize I kind of stopped counting all the way, so I'll start counting in. Uh, number eight is if we go over back to the home of Power Apps, did you know that you can now restore versions of your apps that are older than six months? Right, if we go to apps, and like my university follow-up here app that I use all the time, if I go here to details, so we've always been able to go to versions and then restore up to six months ago. But did you know now if I want to go see what this app looked like on 2-2-2023 two, two, when I did the very first build all those years ago, I could actually go here, click on it, or I guess I'll click right here, and say restore. And so it says, hey, this might take me a minute, right? So it's not as quick, but it really is as quick. But basically, they're going to package it up for us and then bring it forward. So it'll get restored as version 36. We hit restore. The screen flashed in like three seconds. And there's version 36. And so that is the version of the app from, what was that, two plus years ago. So that's a big deal to me, right? Like a lot of people really get stuck. They can only restore version six months old. Now we can go as far back as we want. All right. And last but not least, let's go back to the plans, all right? So if you've been using plans, right, that's where you create a plan. Remember that builds your whole app, use your words, and it walks you through the user roles. And then once it does the user roles, right, then it does the tables, and then the tables, it does all the different apps and flows and such you need, right? Like it, it's kind of a mini architect, right? And I'll put a link to the video for that one up there if you haven't used it before. But they've made some improvements since I made that video. So let's just go here and edit the incident management app. And so one of the big improvements that has been made recently is we now have the ability to go in here and edit the user stories, right? And now that I clicked in here, I can actually come in here and I can delete different ones. I can add my own, I can rearrange them and I can just manually type them in, right? So maybe one of the user needs is to delete old incidents. I don't know, it doesn't matter, right? But you have the ability now to save that. And so then once you're done making the edits, um, then what you can do is you can come in here, right? And we can say keep. And so then now it's going to take that new information that I've given it and it's going to start the whole process over again, right? So now it's looking at the tables like, hey, based on that new requirement that Shane gave us, how can I do it? So this ability to do inline editing of the user roles is very powerful because it used to be that we had to, you know, come in here and basically use Copilot to kind of direct it to spit out the user role we want. But now we can actually come in and just self edit those roles, add things directly, do all the our own logic. So. That is very powerful. And there you go. There was our nine new features in Power Apps or new-ish, right? Like I realize some of these have been around for a while, but you know, sometimes for me, it's hard to get these little things into their own videos. So I just saw, you know, this quick little jump. So what about you? Have you found any other little features that I haven't seen? Leave me a comment below. Tell me about them. Or maybe one of those little features we just did, you're like, hey, I really wish Shane would cover that in more detail. Me too. Just tell me. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.